following the end of Naruto's fourth Ninja War, there were a lot of Naruto fans, arguably a majority of fans, who were under the impression that everything was super peaceful around the continent where the five major nations resided, especially after the events of Naruto the Last, where Naruto Uzumaki would bravely battle against Teneri on the moon and successfully stop him from using the power of the Tensegon to destroy the entire planet. Yet, despite what a lot of fans might think, there were still more seeds of conflict bubbling beneath the surface, and a few of them had the potential to start another shinobi war during the time where this newly formed shinobi alliance though two and a half years old was still fragile and countries like the land of lightning weren't necessarily following the treaty as agreed to and it caused conflict and strife amongst the ninja villages for a time in today's newest edition of after naruto shippuden we're going to be taking a look at the moment in the timeline just after the events of naruto the last where one of these situations was brought to kakashi's notice and it resulted in he and sai working together sharing intel for an important s rank mission that threatened to blow up the peace that the ninja world had currently been enjoying. For those of you guys who are new, After Naruto Shippuden is a series on the channel where we take a look at the stories and the events in the Naruto timeline after the ending of Naruto Shippuden's anime, better known as the blank period of the timeline between Naruto chapter 699 and chapter 700, with many of these stories never having been adapted into the anime, or the ones that were adapted, they weren't fully adapted into the anime. The information in today's video is going to be coming to us from the Naruto epilogue story, Sakura Heat and Love Ride in the Spring Breeze, which takes place almost six months after the events of Naruto last. So Naruto and Hinata, they're already engaged now and their wedding is approaching. Naruto during this downtime is teaching classes at the academy. Shoji has begun dating his future wife. Sakura has assumed control over the Konoha hospital and much to the displeasure of Anbu who were loyal to Danzo, she began sharing Konoha secrets with the other ninja villages to rebuild their hospitals to mirror Konoha's hospital and setting up the civilian mental health treatments in smaller villages that were unfortunately enough to be damaged during the fourth ninja war since several small countries were cleared out to serve as a battlefield for the shinobi alliance and many of those people returned home to areas that were blown up by biju dama and other wide-scale attacks and in some cases children returned to homes that were destroyed and family members who were once shinobi weren't returning home and so it was her goal to prevent another sasuke a situation where children affected and left orphans by the shinobi system ended up becoming radicals who stood against it in the future it's after kakashi sends sakura out with a small team that includes ino to the land of wind to oversee the revamp of the sand villages hospital at gar's request that kakashi brings sai into the hokage office to go over more pressing business the feudal lord of the land of fire the father of madoko ikkyo the feudal lord that we see in board so his father the feudal lord from naruto shippuden had almost been assassinated while being accompanied by homura the village elder who assisted hiruzen tsunade and now kakashi however due to the still sharp instincts of the 74 homura he wasn't assassinated in his attempt and the feudal lord was saved in the attempt that almost killed him in what would have been a successful assassination in both instances but the assassins were never caught and their motives were never discovered at the time since getting the feudal lord to safety was made a top priority it's for that reason that kakashi brings sai into the hokage office because of the complexity of the problem the people who tried to assassinate the land of fire feudal lord and one of the village elders homura they were shinobi but currently kona had a treaty with the other four nations but not the smaller nations outside of the land of iron and kakashi needed proof that no one in the positions of power in the other villages authorized this attempt before raising this situation with the other kage at the five kage summit that he planned to bring this matter up at however unbeknownst to them there was something brewing in the background that would make getting to the bottom of this whole situation a lot more complicated so with the scene and the context being set is here i'm going to begin reading the selected scene from the soccer heaton love riding the spring breeze epilogue story and then i'm going to come back to you guys with my thoughts and it's here i'm going to begin quoting sorry for the rudeness kakashi closed the open file that he held it's fine lord hokage but a personal request for me is it a mission of some kind sai asked hmm well 
It is like a mission, but this won't be official, Kakashi replied. Sai narrowed his eyes slightly. What do you mean by that? I want you to check into something for me, but I want you to move alone. You cannot be caught. Check into what? Sai asked. Kakashi nodded and continued. The feudal lord visited last week to recuperate at a hot spring and he was attacked. I'm sure you know about this, Kakashi said. Yes, I read the report. A single kunai shot out and hit very close to where the feudal lord was sitting in the water. Kakashi nodded. Luckily, there was zero damage. The feudal lord was uninjured, but the Anbu set up a strict watch around the hot spring that the feudal lord went to that day. A single kunai, they should have been able to take care of that, Kakashi paused. A few days before that, when Master Homura inspected the village, he and the two ninja with them were assaulted by thugs, Kakashi said. I didn't know that, Sai replied. Of course you didn't. It wasn't in the report. Master Homura and I didn't want to turn into a big problem, so we didn't make it public, Kakashi said. Lord Hokage, that's unsettling. Men in the senior ranks, they're being attacked like that, Sai began. And in succession, Kakashi finished. So you want me to look into these two incidents, Sai asked. Yes, but I don't know if it stops at two, or if there's a third we don't know about, or if the same person or party is responsible for both, or if they're even connected. I want you to lump it in as one investigation, Kakashi said. What about the Anbu Black Ops? Why aren't you using them for something like this? Sai asked. The Anbu are investigating, but I want a separate investigation going on simultaneously that nobody knows about. And for that, I need you. Kakashi said. You don't want me to work with Naruto and Sakura? The investigation would be more efficient if I had a team. Well, come to think of it, Naruto, he isn't too great at this sort of a thing, Sai said. So you understand. Kakashi smiled before continuing. Naruto is indeed strong, but he's not really suited for this type of covert mission. Sakura is unavailable. I have her doing other work for the village. For now, you won't have help, but be very careful. This isn't a simple prank or a petted criminal. There's something bigger at play here, Kakashi said. Lord Hokage, you be careful too. Top level people in the country are being attacked. It wouldn't be strange at all if the Hokage was targeted next, Sai said. The scenario flashed into Kakashi's mind, and he thought to himself, I wish they'd hurry up and target me already so then all this can be over, Kakashi thought. End quote. Now, outside of that savage line at the end where Kakashi's basically going, I wish one of these dudes would hurry up and target me because they'll end up with a toe tag and a matching body bag. I love this scene because it shows the decision-making process of Kakashi and how much he's grown into the Hokage position. He's very methodical and careful in how he came to the conclusion he did. He already suspects that there might be some who are loyal to Donzo from within the Anbu who might have been behind this, but he has no proof and he can't accuse any of the other Kage of having rogue actors in their village without proof either. The same with any smaller villages who refuse Konoha's treaty, like say the Rain Village. It's important to remember that this treaty, it's only two years old and there are still those who held the same viewpoint that Chio held, which is that you have to distrust the other villages and not believe in this whole thing of cooperation because it was unheard of. Banding together to face Madara, that was one thing. Madara was a legitimate world event in terms of threat, even if it was really Obito pretending to be Madara, which we all know eventually would become a bigger threat in the form of Kage's revival. Kage, such as the Rai Kage, they hadn't been faithfully adhering to the treaty either. Remember that big chakra cannon from Naruto the last? The Shinobi Treaty said that they weren't supposed to be doing something like that. They're supposed to specifically disarm their military power. They weren't supposed to expand it, which is why the other Kage and the feudal lords were shocked that the Rai Kage had a weapon that could destroy the moon. Because if such a thing could be used to destroy the moon, what was to stop him from pointing it in the direction of another ninja village? And that rightfully left some of the Kage upset, especially because None of them had Jinchuriki outside of Konoha and the Hidden Cloud Village. And that caused a further examination of the treaty because one of them was not going along with it. Kakashi needed to be certain before bringing any accusations of foul play up. And if it was something internal that the Land of Fire had, he needed to be certain that it was the supporters of Donzo before he wrongfully accused them. And most importantly, he needed to make sure that there wasn't a plan to target other feudal lords outside of the Land of Fire. I do find it funny though. The moment that Sai sat down and thought about it, he shut down any prospect of working with Naruto on a mission like this because he knows better than anyone, Naruto isn't cut out for something like this. As we discussed in a few videos already on this channel, Naruto did team up with Sai in the months after the Ninja War to 
hunt down Shinobi who deserted the battlefield following the infinite Tsukiyomi and sided with Madara's worldview on doing things in a way that got rid of the Shinobi system which set Shinobi ending up in places like the land of silence and it's how Naruto carried himself during the year after that war that Sai politely got Naruto moved off of those missions, which is how Sai ended up in the land of silence all alone during the Shikamaru Hiden story that Naruto Shippuden did adapt. Naruto wasn't as big of an idiot anymore, and he was better at things like Shinobi strategy than he used to be, but that childish nature, it still had a tendency to show up at times, and so too did his impatience, which led to Naruto barging into hideouts ready for all the smoke because he got bored with waiting to gather intel which made Sai's job a whole lot harder. Even on a collector joint mission where Sasuke returned to the village to assist Naruto, Sai, Sakura, and Team 10 on a mission to hunt down a moderate sympathizer who had a large scale radical plan that would have cost a lot of people their lives, Naruto fell asleep during the intel briefing and kept calling the target by the wrong name and absentmindedly almost let him get away because having the attention span of a goldfish isn't suited for those types of missions. Naruto was asleep during the meeting, didn't recognize his target, target almost got away. However, as you'll notice, Kakashi did say that Sai would have help in the future, but unbeknownst to them, there was something deeper at play via those Donzo loyalists who were experimenting with Naruto and Sasuke's DNA that was left behind at the final valley that threatened to turn the ninja world back into a world where war was an everyday thing. Kakashi's era as Hokage, it was very far from peaceful, which this video on the screen breaks down everything that happened when Kakashi was Hokage.